on Ragnaros, who the f*** is that? That's a fucking 50 DKP minus! I want the roll. And you do ass. not get the 8k DPI, dude. Now shut the fuck up, dude. Hey guys, Zazarothy back with another video for you guys. Now, before we go any further, let me just say this one thing. This is all my personal opinion and only that. I am in no way saying other loot systems are bad. All I'm doing is explaining my reasoning for why I think Loot Council is the best and most fair loot system overall. So please don't crucify me in the comments. I, I've been in DKP guilds, EPGP guilds, they're perfectly fine if they're done correctly. But let's that's enough of that, I'm done defending myself. Today in this video we will be speaking about mainly loot council, but I will be going over some past experiences and what I think of other loot systems like DKP, EPGP, and even slash roll system. Gross. But let's get into the video and keep it going. Starting with our first loot system, we have my favorite, the loot council. This system is basically what it sounds like. It's a group of guildies, usually leadership will form a council and one that decides who gets the loot based off of performance, attendance, and whatever else the guild thinks is the basis of why people should get loot. It varies from guild to guild on the reasoning. It can go from hardcore people who are all about the performance, are you number one on DPS, are you parsing well, or it can go to be casual or, hey, do you have 100% rate attendance, do you have... Do you, uh, are you friendly to guildmates? Usually hardcore guilds don't really care about that, but casual guilds will. Now, another thing to mention is most guilds will keep this as a three to five man council. Uh, this is to help uh, the fact that there can't be a tie, or some will even keep an even amount of people on the council and the GM will have two votes. That's how my guild does it. Now, uh, that's enough of the configuration of Loot Council and how it works. Let's go ahead and jump into the pros and cons of Loot Council and see what Loot Council is all about. Starting with the pros of Loot Council, I will add my first one, and to me it is the most important one. We have puts you puts loot in hands where it is best used meaning it's making sure the item with the best stats is going to the class or player that is going to best utilize those stats so for example in our guild even though let's say choker of the fire lord is great for healers healers don't have a chance at it until all the caster dps have it because it is better for casters than it is healers. This is used to make sure that whenever an item comes up, it's going to help further the raid as a whole. Since it is better used in the caster's DPS hands, that means it equals a boss going down faster by association. And that is my favorite thing about Loot Council is I know since I am I like to think I am fairly versed in all the classes and what stats are good and what items are good for them. Uh, so I like to know that loot is going to be going to the right place. For our second pro on the loot council side, we have less work on non-loot council members, meaning Raiders that aren't on the loot council don't have to worry about making sure their DKP is right. Uh, all they have to do is press a button on RC loot council that says, hey, I want this. And if they want, they can leave a note explaining why they want, why they want it and what they're going to use it for. For example, if somebody wants Ash Candy purely for PvP, they can put that in the note. And... I think that's what another one of my favorite things about Loot Council is it takes a lot of the pressure off of uh, non-Loot Council members. But the downside is that 
Blue Council members do have a little bit of more extra work since they have to come up with spreadsheets and such. But overall, since there's usually only like three to five people on the Blue Council, it's pretty easy for the raid entirely. And for our third and final pro, so the video doesn't go on for 30 minutes plus, we have easily identifies who is a loot whore in the guild. What I mean by that is when a loot council is making decisions and someone is constantly getting fed up that he didn't get this item even though he got that item last week, it's helping the leadership identify, okay, all this guy cares about is that he's getting his epics. He doesn't care about helping the raid. He just wants his items. And there's other ways to identify those people. For instance, if all they ever talk about is, ooh, I hope I get this loot this weekend, da da da. But this is a nice handy way to point it out. So a lot of, we've even done this in our uh, guild runs in the past. Not in the guild I'm in now, but before back when uh back in like retail guilds back in like say I think it was like Wrath or BC back when I was in another loot council. We would p purposely not give somebody an item to see what their reaction would be like if we've been kind of feeling that they've been acting in a harsh attitude towards loot. So we would get the other people in on it that we're giving the item to and tell them, hey, no, give it to them if they don't act. But if they start acting up, yelling and saying that I should have got this loot or being uh, slight handed towards you and smart ass comments and such, it's easily identifiable and it, it needs to be dealt with because I'm warning you now, a loot hoard in your guild is never a good, good thing. And especially going forward, once we get into AQ and Nax, where loot might actually matter. But okay, now it's time to move on to the cons part of the list. Starting with our first con, I guess we should get the big elephant out of the room. Corruption. What I mean by corruption is, Loot Council has a very easy way for leadership or friends in the guild to funnel loot towards the girlfriend that they're dating or whatever you want to say it or the guild master to say oh no i get prio on this and this and this and this it's very easy for the loot council to take advantage of that and it leads to people getting their feelings hurt and feeling like they're being excluded from the inner circle so i will admit that that is a glaring problem when it comes to loot council but if a if the Loot Council is transparent in their decisions and um, what we like to do is do 20 minutes after raid, the Loot Council will speak about their decisions afterwards on any loot that uh, upset anybody. And that seems to have helped our raids so much in loot decisions. We did, we've did like we had some drama there at the beginning of Classic WoW, but I think that was just kind of weeding out the people that uh, like to throw fits. And well, there you have it guys. That is the only con to Loot Council that I fully agree with. Uh, yes, I understand it is a big con, but in my humble opinion, I don't. I think if you find a guild that is transparent enough, Loot Council will help you feel comfort in knowing that leadership is acting in your best interest. And that is the only con I can literally think of besides like maybe it slows down the raid sometimes. But loot is usually done at the end anyways. So it doesn't really truly matter. But that's all uh, about loot council. Let's go ahead and jump into the next loot system that's probably the second most used among the classic WoW guilds. And that one is called DKP. DKP is stands for dragon killing points this loot system originated back in like uh everquest days and basically the premise of this loot system is you are rewarded points for doing raid activities for example you get five points for showing up to raid on time three points for showing up with full consumables two points for making a donation to the guild bank or yada yada it can go on for days different guilds have different quotas for how they hand out D dkp and some get ridiculous, like, uh, I've been even been in one where one gold bought you one DKP. That is 
outrageous that you can literally just buy yourself loot in the loot system. So yeah, that's just utterly ridiculous in my mind. But the main premise of DKP is you're going to be bidding. So for example, when an item drops, the raid leader will put up a raid warning, this item, and sometimes they do open bidding or silent bidding. It depends on the guild on what they use, but essentially you'll be bidding against your guildmates with your DKP. Some guilds even allow you to go negative in DKP, which I've never really agreed with. Like if you don't have points, don't bid. So now that we have the premise of DKP, let's jump into the pros and the cons. Starting with our first pro of DKP, we have less chance of corruption. What I mean by this is there's nobody making your decision for you when it comes to DKP or making the decision for the guild on who gets the item is better, better worded. Uh, basically, you are in control of your own chance at getting this item. Uh, there's no way for the GM to say, no, screw your DKP, I'm going to give it to this person because I feel he deserves it more. If a GM were to do that, uh, it would just make the whole system fall apart and you would end up with a guild falling apart or people leaving pretty fast. Uh, so that is one of the pros of DKP is it kind of makes it to where everybody has equal power when it comes to loot. And for our second pro of DKP, we have it allows loot to be more free. What I mean by that is classes that may not have had a chance at getting an item now can bid on that item and get it if they have enough DKP. For example, in our guild, healers are not allowed to get Choker of the Fire Lord until all the caster DPS in the guild have it already. As, and why we do that is because it is a bigger upgrade for casters. But in DKP, if that healer has the points, nobody can stop him from bidding. And that is one of the pros. It it makes uh, gearing much more easy, in my opinion. So you don't have to worry about, oh, the tanks will probably get this item first. Uh, Fury Warriors are always on seconds, because no, it all comes down to DKP. Uh, but that can be uh, countered with some DKP guilds have a, a soft prio sheet that restricts DKP. Starting with our third pro of DKP, we have one of my actually my things I do love about DKP is it allows guildies to manage their own chances at loot. Meaning, it's totally up to a the guildie on whether they save up for an item or not. So they get to manage their chances, and they can't be mad if they don't have enough DKP for that item. So. Uh, Guilty would have to knowingly know, hey, if you're going all in on, let's say, Lokomir, don't be mad when Pure Elementium Band drops next raid and you can't get it. Because that's just how DKP goes. And I do kind of like that raiders are kind of held up to their own mistakes and they have nobody to blame but themselves. So I will give a point to DKP for that one. Moving on to the cons of DKP. Our first one will be the glaring indiscrepancy of DKP in my opinion is hoarding. A popular thing problem that happens with DKP is raiders will hoard their DKP for that one big item and pass on smaller upgrades that they might not deem as important, which in the end slows down the raid. It, you're passing on upgrades just in the hope that Lokomir finally drops or hell if people don't do uh, decay or restart DKP after a new raid tier people will be hoping I don't know hungry and cold drops off of Keltazon and they still have all this DKP and they're for sure gonna get it but you're passing on upgrades up the way which is just in stupid in my opinion uh, if an upgrade drops you should be doing everything in your power to get it for yourself so that is the biggest problem with DKP for me. I do not like DKP hoarders, and I think they bring a bad name to DKP. And that is the main reason why I try not to join DKP guilds. Moving on to number two for the cons list. 
we have loot ends up in the wrong hands of raiders meaning you end up with classes that probably shouldn't have an item ending up having it for example I made my Holy Paladin video a while back and I said Mishandari should be going to caster DPS before Holy Paladins. The spell crit is much more valuable to DPS than it is to Holy Paladins. And I, in my mind, you should be able to send it to where it is best used. And with DKP, you have no control over that and at all it is completely up to guildies if they want to be a dick and spend their dkp on something that's a minor upgrade for them but a major upgrade for someone else they can and there's really nothing you can do to stop them that isn't just going to completely ruin your system and for our third and final con of dkp we have one that i'm very passionate about it doesn't reward non-raid activities meaning it you can't get DKP for always being online and running five mans with new members or up and coming 60s. You can't take that account into DKP. And that's one thing I really love about Loot Council is Loot Council can discuss that and be like, hey man, this guy's a really good guy. He does all of this. And that's one of my big things. DKP really rewards raid loggers and does nothing to penalize them for doing so. And I know we all kind of hate raid loggers. I, I know I do at least. I don't hate them. I just I don't like to see loot that loot go to people that only use it one time a week or two times a week. So that's a big problem in my book. DKP just doesn't reward the hard work outside of raid that guildies sometimes you put into uh, their guild. Guys, that's all I have for you on DKP. I do think DKP is a good system. I'm definitely not against joining DKP guilds or running that system at all. It's just, as I've said many times, I prefer Loot Council, but if uh, you find a good guild and they're running DKP, just learn the inning, ins and outs of it and you'll do perfectly fine in DKP. It's not some god-awful system. Uh, but moving on to our third system of the day, we have EPGP. Uh, which stands for effort points and gear points. The way this system works is each item in raid has a predetermined price which counts against your EPGP. Now the way you calculate your EPGP score is your rewarded EP or effort points for showing up to raid. Yada yada just like DKP but the difference is you then take the EP and divide it by your GP which is gear points uh, which you get from buying an item with your gear points basically so for so for example say you have 5,000 EP and 500 GP you divide the two and get 10 10 EP you have that much points it can get kind of confusing and some people add little tweaks to it so I definitely say do a lot of research before jo joining an EP GP guild because I've seen people get absolutely screwed over in EPGP guilds. Now the important question I'm sure you're asking is, how in the hell do you win the item? Well, it's quite simple actually. Whoever has the highest EP, uh, EP score wins the item if they want it. It's as simple as kind of clicking a button. Hey, I want it. They'll look at the add-on. Uh, there's an add-on that easily calculates your EPGP for you. And glaring any stupid stuff like uh, they might say oh well you can't have this item because of yada yada reason the item is yours <laughs> well that is by far the longest explanation of the video so far so let's hop into the pros and cons of EPGP with a first pro of EPGP we have a repeating uh, pro less chance of corruption uh, basically same thing as I said with DKP is there's no way for the guild master to have influence over someone else's uh, effort points so it's impossible for them to override the the decision without absolutely ruining their their whole system and causing people to have a sour taste in their mouth so I'm not gonna go over the whole thing again I'm just going to put on the pros less chance of corruption 
Moving on to our second pro, we have something that's uh, kind of a small thing, but I'm going to add it on there anyways. It puts a price on items, and to me it helps give guildies that may not know their class or itemization that well an idea of how good an item is. So for example, if they see that item A is worth 200, 200 gear points, but item B is worth 800 gear points, obviously that must, must be much better than that item for their class but then again that's not always perfect itself either and for our final pro we have it's the quickest way to handle loot by far epgp is very simple with the add-on they have for it i can't really recall the name of it right now as i'm recording the video uh but it's literally just pressing a button they look at the spreadsheet if the person wants that item they get the item there's nothing else to it uh it's probably just as fast as slash rolling to be honest uh, moving on to the cons list we have it is definitely the most complicated of the bunch just because there's so many different variations of EP and GP and you're keeping track of different GP scores on items and such so that is why I said earlier you definitely want to research as much as possible before joining an EP GP uh, guild uh, maybe even run some test runs with them to make sure that this is the kind of guild you want to join for our second uh, con we have another repeat it's once again has a chance at loot ending up in the wrong class slash person uh, same as I said back then on DKP you have no control over where items go so it could go to somebody that uh, that isn't really going to use an item that's maybe a one agi increase for some for this person but it's a i don't even know what to say but like we can go back to the example of chucker the fire lord for caster dps and uh chucker the fire lord for healers it should go to caster dps first and another repeat is it doesn't reward non-raid activities seeing as you can't get effort points outside of raid otherwise people would call it unfair uh, there's no way for you to reward that without being called out for favoritism or asking uh, being people complaining about well my schedule doesn't allow that da 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 and I really don't like that because I like to reward people for doing stuff outside of raid and for our first fourth on a list it's definitely the most work for officers yeah uh, because you have to have somebody constantly updating the price on items because the price on items do go down when you go into different raids so for example mage blade might have been a big ticket item when mc first came when people were first getting into mc but now it's really not worth all that much because there's so many upgrades in bwl and even upgrades in zg uh, for say holy pallies so it's definitely it can be a lot of work because you're trying to find that healthy balance of yeah, I want to make this item very expensive because it's that good, but you also don't want to make it to where it breaks your guildies whenever they try to bid on it. But guys, that's all the loot systems I have for y'all today. I had a ton of fun recording this video, and I'm already, I know I say this every, but I'm already working on the next one. I try to keep, keep the flow of videos going as well as I possibly can for a startup YouTuber. Uh, I really do hope this video was helpful at all and truly educational for people. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple things before I let you guys go. Uh, starting with the fact that I have started a new social media accounts on all platforms including Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. So if you want announcements, updates, and tons more fun stuff, to be sure to give me a follow and join the Discord. Uh, it would be a It'd be greatly appreciated. Come join the community I'm trying to create with my viewers and my subscribers. I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing so-and-so has followed my Instagram, my Twitter, joined my Discord. Doesn't matter. I would hope you know that I truly would appreciate it. Uh, well, guys, that's it for today. Uh, let's see if we can push for 100 subs by the end of May. It really would be huge. So if you'd leave me a like and subscribe to the channel for more content, That'd be great. Peace out, guys. See you in the next video.